I'm Bob Warfield from CNC Cookbook, and today I want to talk about lights out machining. First, let's all get on the same page about exactly what lights out machining means. I like this simple definition. Lights out machining means you go home and the machines keep on working. That's really all there is to it. So why do it? The reasons for a shop to do lights out machining are equally as simple. First, if the machines keep working with no operators, then that work comes to you much more cheaply. It's more profitable. The operator is usually the most expensive cost over the life of the machine, and there's no operator during lights out machining. Second, it increases your shop's capacity. Whatever work is being done lights out, is extra work without you needing to pay for more machines or more operator time. This can be really helpful when you need to ramp up quickly and don't have time to hire, train, or buy more machines. Third, it may give you a chance to rebalance your workload so longer jobs are done lights out and shorter jobs happen during manned shifts. More shorter jobs, more setup time, and setup requires operators. So doing all the setup during man shifts and just pure machining during lights out helps. Lastly, you can often tolerate longer running finish passes during lights out. For example, smaller 3D step overs on a 3D profiling job. This can let you do jobs that are otherwise impractical but that make good economic sense with lights out. Top shops are 39% more likely to run lights out than the average shop. That's just one reason they're more profitable, but it's a big reason you ought to be thinking about it for your shop. So why doesn't every shop do as much lights out as they can? The answer is it's not that easy. Lights out machining is a particular set of skills and techniques you need to learn as well as equipment that you need to have available. With no operators, there may also be no monitoring. A tool can break and the machine just keeps on going. Coolant may not be aimed properly or the nozzle could clog. A machine could malfunction and hang a tool during a tool change. There could be a crash or even worse, a fire. If there's an operator, they'll catch those things right away, but there are no operators during lights out. When there is no operator, there is no intervention. They can't change a broken tool. They don't load new work pieces. They don't flip parts over in a vise. They don't inspect and adjust wear offsets to hold tolerances. All that is missing from lights out. Or is it? There are ways to work around some or all of this, and learning them is what you need to implement lights out for your shop. The key to lights out machining is simple. Start small and grow with experience. You don't need to automate everything to get benefit from lights out. How about only running the last tool on a lights out job, a finishing pass, for example? How about only running your easy, nice to have jobs and no critical deliverables? You do want the minimum amount of automation and monitoring for safety. You have to decide what's right for your shop, but I would certainly want fire alarms and remote monitoring via webcam at a bare minimum. Only run your most reliable machines lights out and stick to mature, proven jobs. So what if you don't make an entire part during lights out? Even if you only keep the machines running an extra one or two hours a day, that's highly profitable work and it's worth doing. Successful lights out machining requires a defensive mindset. Assume everything that can go wrong will go wrong and then ask what you'll do about it if it does go wrong. Never run new code lights out, only proven part programs. To be defensive, program a multi-part run to finish that first part while the operator is present. In fact, finish part by part instead of saving the tool changes. 
That ensures the vast majority of things for that part are working. Reduce your feeds and speeds by 15% to reduce the likelihood of tool breakage. Avoid jaws with difficult coolant aiming, so no deep slots or deep pockets. Start with your nice-to-have jobs, not expensive critical work with tight tolerances. And how about keeping just one light on? What if you had just one operator there who could monitor against major mishaps? That can make a huge difference. The first thing you want to try to automate is your setups. Fix your plates, pallet changers, and probes for setup. And be sure to leave plenty of time at the end of the day to set up for the lights out work. The last thing you want is people hurrying that setup to go home sooner and making a mistake that won't be revealed until long after the lights are turned off. Automate what you can for setup and leave plenty of time for the manual parts as well before the lights out cycle starts. Once you have a handle on setup, start on in cycle automation. This is where you'll eventually automate enough that you could do almost anything lights out. I've listed a lot of the possibilities here, but you're automating the machine's ability to monitor with tool breakage sensors. You're automating its ability to load more material and make more parts with bar feeders, pallet changers, and parts catchers. You're automating its ability to monitor its work with in-process probing. And you're guarding against malfunction with preventative maintenance, coolant management, and chip management. Take all that into account and you'll be doing successful lights out machining before you know it. I hope you understand by now that by taking lights out a little bit at a time, most shops can benefit from it. The trick is not getting too ambitious right out of the gate. I'm Bob Warfield. Thanks for listening and I'll be back soon with another CNC Chef video.